Hey, we're Emma and Matt. Welcome to One More Adventure. Hey guys. So we're at our local park here. We've decided to come out for a walk and we've covered a few questions so you can get to know us a little better. Okay, so first question is why do we enjoy travel? Why do I like travel? Um, I like to travel for the freedom, um, mainly for, you go sometimes for the views, so sometimes the hikes are quite hard, but then the views are worth it. Um, I travel for horse culture, if there's anything botanical involved, I'll usually be there to find plants and growth will not grow in our humidity in our, in our area, um, that's a bonus for me. Um, and some of the places we've already visited were perfect for that, we've seen some massive massive trees that just couldn't be seen here some greenery everything everything to do but uh, everything's botanical yes i think to bounce off matt i completely agree with him and it's also just really nice to just to discover new cultures meet new people um the food is really cool um uh, yeah just the landscapes you can come across are nothing like what we get at home and it really is that just New adventures, something different that breaks the routine from our day-to-day -day lives. And, uh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think just that in itself is, uh, is enough for us. So, uh, so favourite place and why? Oh. Uh, my favourite place, this is a hard one, um, I'd have to say probably Java in Indonesia. Hmm. Uh, that island in itself was absolutely amazing. Um, culturally speaking, we were able to visit the Prambanan and Borobudur temples, I think it was. They were amazing and definitely worth a visit. And then as far as nature goes, well, you've got two active, well, more than two active volcanoes on the island. Um, we visited Bromo and you could just hear the earth rumbling <laughs> just climbing that volcano. And then the other one, I mean, Mount Ijen, I mean, it's, it's unique. It's the only one in the world that has um, blue flames going down the side of the mountain. So yeah, Java, Indonesia. So yeah, for, for me, it would be more sustaining in Indonesia. It would be more, I think it's going to be really cheesy, but Bali. <laughs> um, I knew you knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Bali. Um, just it offers something for everyone. It's really kind of cliche, but it's just it really does give everything. You go to the center, you've got that vibe. You've got that big hub. Um, you've got massive and great diving spots. The water is warm year, pretty much long. Um, visibility is ace. Um, you really can't go wrong. place uh, probably the Pyrenees uh, a little bit different so more of a, a mountain hike obviously taking just taking the necessities taking just mm. a take a small tent bit of food for maybe like a long weekend or something put it on your backpack and just go in there's not much it's just more war <laughs> um, it's just you the backpack and just that pure nature um, I'm probably gonna say our Europe road trip we did last year um, so we flew into Budapest, spent a couple days there, and then we basically travelled overland from Budapest over to Bratislava in Slovakia. Mm. Uh, we visited Vienna in Austria and I finished off in Prague in Czechoslovakia. And I think it was just, it was really nice. We travelled by bus and by train and got to visit uh, quite a few different countries and different cultures. And so yeah, that's probably my favourite one so far, I think. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so the place that surprised you the most? Uh, okay, um, probably gonna say was as at in Morocco. Um, this was a trip that was organised super last minute. So yep. I think we <laughs> booked the flights on the Thursday and flew on Saturday. Um, we flew there without any information of the place, and we just loved it. You've got a UNESCO World Heritage Site there as well in Eight Benadou, uh, which is really nice. It's actually, the filming location of quite a lot of films, like Game of Thrones, I think, is one of the major ones. Yep. Um, it's also known as the gateway to the desert and so we were able to stay Sahara, yeah. um, in a little oasis a few nights and yeah it was just really nice to kind of completely different culture to what we, we know and we're used to so definitely yeah was as that in, um, in Morocco yeah yeah so I think for me it's Bratislava um, just because it was we were just been in Budapest we knew we wanted to go to Austria and it was in between and it was kind of like just a jumping point, but it turned out to be this, this awesome place. You could just walk around, eat, and, and honestly just enjoy. We had yeah. perfect weather for it as well. The people were super nice, really helpful. 
um, neither speak Slovakian <laughs> in any sense. Um, and honestly, it was just a great place to go chill. Uh, had time to read a book, walk around, visit the sites. It was actually really good. Okay, so, most overhyped country or place you visited? Um, I think I'd have to say Prague, unfortunately. The town in itself, the city, is beautiful, it is amazing, it is. But we've had so many friends and family that have been there and have, I suppose, overhyped it that our expectations were so high when we got there. Yeah that we felt that the place wasn't as cheap as people had explained um, you had to pay to visit anything and uh, uh, yeah I think we was just a bit underwhelmed with that place yeah, yeah. I think I'm in agreement with that um, just for hearing every, all the good things that everyone had said and you, you go as, as the Mid has said you're, yeah. you're hyped up you're expecting big things and if I think if we were there 10-15 years ago we would have had that and it's not as cheap as people say anymore and I think also the fact that we'd just come from Vienna and Bratislava that we absolutely adored. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, I think had we done Prague by itself, we might have maybe enjoyed it a bit more. Cheapest and most expensive places we've been. Okay, that's an easy one. Um, so it's got to be Sumatra in Indonesia. Um, from 30 to 50p meals, yeah. um, the activities cost nothing. You need to get from A to B, so the taxi rides are freakishly low <laughs> yeah. they cost nothing and uh compared to obviously living in europe and uh, and in france it's it's mm. a big big difference so your, your money... money goes a long long way yeah and so yeah the most expensive place um i think it kind of goes without saying but i'd have to say switzerland yeah. we spent a weekend <laughs> in geneva and our bank accounts took a hit after that weekend um yeah everything is just i think yeah, it's pretty expensive to be honest, but there are ways of doing it for cheaper. I mean, like if you can try and find somewhere accommodation with a kitchen, you don't have to eat out, and so it does help reduce the cost, but yeah, it was an expensive place. <laughs> okay, so bucket list destination. Um, wow, okay. <laughs> There's quite a few, I think. Um, Probably say maybe like somewhere like Peru with like is it Machu Picchu over there as well? Hmm. Um, maybe actually quite a lot of South America. We haven't done that yet, and uh, yeah, I think it's somewhere that I would absolutely love to explore one of these days. Yeah. Yeah, for me it would be more probably well, I mean bad timing, but going to China. Um, so you got the uh, Great Wall of China, the architecture, um, Chinese food. I can live off Chinese food and uh, yeah, but Great Wall of China, um, I know you've been actually wanting to do the marathon on the Great, uh, the Great Wall of <laughs> yeah. China, so that actually would, might be a, a winning point for that us. That would be pretty cool, yeah. Uh, next question is, what is your least favourite thing about travel? <laughs> um, probably, it's going to sound funny, but probably the travel itself, um, especially in France. Uh, there's, some, there's some awesome destinations in France, we often go to the Pyrenees, we often go to the Dordogne. Uh, we're kind of left, right and centre around, but it's that road travel, so sometimes it's three hours, sometimes it's only two and a half hours, there's a lot of traffic, so it might sound but funny, but the travel to get to where I want to be, uh, when I'm excited, I just want to be there, I just want to see, I want to you know, feel it, it's a little bit different. I kind of agree, I'd have to say, like the travel time sometimes can be quite long and uh, tedious, um, and that maybe, I think sometimes the language barrier actually could get frustrating. Especially when you want to understand people's stories and be able to get your point across. Um, yeah, probably sometimes that as well. Okay, so favourite weekend de uh, destination? Um, okay, so we're based in France near an airport. So we're pretty lucky in the fact that we can get over pretty much anywhere in Europe within like a couple of hours. Hmm. Um, so I suppose any city break really would be really cool. Um, I think somewhere that offers quite a lot is Amsterdam. Uh, for a weekend you have got plenty to do. Um, we absolutely we loved it there in all fairness. Uh, there's so many museums to do. Rent a bike and just travel around the city on the bike. That is the best thing to do, best way to discover the place. Yeah. Um, their food is pretty good as well. I know it's not reputation for their food but it's pretty good. Um, we just on. love their culture and their way of life as well, so yeah, I'd say Amsterdam probably. Okay. 
I'm going to stay more local and say we, we often go to the Dodoin, um, around the Sala and Dom, kind of around the area. And um, I understand why a lot of English move there. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the views there, it's just green. You know, it's an outside kind of place. So when the, the weather does turn up, um, you can just walk around as freely, picnic, just enjoy it. Um, just the views really make it. And yeah, and have some good food so, <laughs> again. <laughs> recommend to go for say a week away all right for a week okay probably Greece um, it gives you a massive choice we, we went to Greece two years ago and kind of did the typical Athens island hopping um, between Naxos obviously Santorini and all the others um, a week might be a bit short but you can do a lot with it and there's really something for everyone if there's if you want to party there's Mykonos Santorini and so on um, if you you know if you want to go to the beach again there's there's islands for that it's kind of full week you kind of get what you want and there's something and you can change it up during that week you don't have to stick with that one thing during the week mm. yeah i have to agree as well actually i think greece is uh, it's got something for everybody um so we flew into athens and there you've got so much history uh, the Acropolis, which is absolutely yeah. amazing to visit. Uh, they'll get there early, there's few people. <laughs> and then from Athens you've got the port, and so you can access pretty much any island you want to from there. Each island has its own identity, is really unique, and yeah. uh, it's so easy, you can pretty much turn up at the ferry port and buy a ticket there as well. So even if you don't know where you want to go when you arrive, um, there's, it's just so easy to get around. They've got night ferries as well, and uh, yeah, I think uh, Greece was probably one of somewhere I'd recommend. Yeah. Favorite food you've tried while traveling? Okay, so uh, going back to the Eastern European, uh, the pierogi. It's basically like an equivalent of a dumpling. Um, they kind of come in different fillings. You've got the, the meat, you've got the cottage cheese. Um, there's the potato and the cabbage, obviously. They eat a lot of cabbage. <laughs> um, they're just good. They're steamed and just given to you and you can just eat them like that. And oh, they're good. <laughs> I think what I most enjoyed though as well was in Morocco, the tagines. Yeah. I absolutely love their tagines. The spices they use, I mean, you can try and replicate it as much as you want here, but if you haven't got the spices from over there, it isn't going to be the same. <laughs> so yeah, I'll probably go with the tagines from Morocco. Okay, so uh, favorite activity while we've been away? Um, it has to be scuba diving for me. Um, yeah, I absolutely try, want to try it for years. And um, when we started traveling, um, was when we actually started to do scuba diving as well. Mm. And it's just amazing. You get to discover a completely different world um, like the, the marine wildlife you can discover is just uh, it's, it's exceptional really in most of the places we've been to as well and so it's actually something we look for in a destination we travel to um, the decent scuba diving spots so, yeah one of the reasons why we choose a place <laughs> exactly exactly if there's decent scuba diving it's probably on our list of places to go hmm. yeah okay so for me it's the uh, it's got to be the Sumatran rainforest we, we went trekking there we spent about three or four days in the rainforest um, it's as raw as you're going to get. There's literally a guy in front of you uh, creating a path through this beautiful nature um, and as well as the wildlife. Um, it's just you can't get any more pristine and perfect. Um, it was just unreal. Minus the leeches. The leeches <laughs> are annoying. Um, but no, seriously, you, you, if you like nature, you're surrounded and you couldn't be yeah. as far away from anything that's non-nature as possible. Yeah, I mean, like, to literally see orangutans create their nest on a night and be yeah. woken up by rustling is just, uh, it's, not, it's just you don't get to experience that in day to day life. Mm. Yeah, that's a, sorry, I think that's a good one, yeah. Okay, so how would you describe our style of travelling? Um, I mean, I think backpacking for one, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't fit in a backpack, it isn't coming with us. <laughs> but it means that we only bring what's essential. We're not bringing a lot of different clothing, um, really bringing what we need for the climate we're going to, the activities we're planning on doing. Um, we're always on the lookout for a good deal as well. 
Um, I think we always just stay in hostels or like cheaper accommodation. Um, we always just try locally sourced food as well. It's a lot cheaper. Um, we don't go to fancy restaurants because we want to eat like the locals. Um, again, we always look for anything that is, um, I suppose like walking tours even, or like just going and finding the city parks and um, really kind of trying to live like the locals. I mean, I know we don't live like the locals, but trying to at least kind of do some of the similar things. And I think that it allows us to immerse ourselves yeah, a bit more in their culture. this one I uh, hope this kind of allowed you to get to know us a bit better um, if you've got any comments and I mean or any questions even please just leave them in the comments below and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one See you soon.